Hello everybody, Chaplain Dell here today in my little chaplain shirt because uh, the reason I'm, I'm wearing this today is because I want to show uh, that I have had some training in the clergy as a reverend, um, as a um, churchman, but more importantly I'm speaking as a Christian today who had a stage one, as they call it, near-death experience. However, what I have found is this has become a cultural sensation, um, near-death experience. People in the science religion have replaced people, in my view, that really ought to be uh, heading up this uh, type of so-called research. Uh, so even before the near-death experience and things like this became a cultural phenomenon that everybody, the sensationalism that everybody jumps into and believes what they will, uh, I, as a young man, had a lot of exposure to demons, deceptions, and walking in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why I'm putting my chaplain's shirt on here. Instead of wearing a white robe, I'm wearing my white chaplain's shirt. Because I think I'm just as qualified as uh, somebody who went through the world's uh, educational system uh, in uh, speaking of things uh, as far as the afterlife and spiritual events. This is the job of the church and unfortunately, a lot of the church will not address these type of issues, and they need to be doing that. So this is my little stab at uh, trying to address this. Now, I'm going to read some notes here uh, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and you have different sites, near-death experiencers, Emanuel Swedenborg, which is the Swedenborg Foundation, International Association for Near-Death Studies, Dr. Helmut Oz, and a lot of these people I do have respect for because they are intellectually honest uh, with, uh, with a lot of their research. However, it doesn't make them experts any more than it makes Dr. Long an expert, uh, a medical doctor, in his uh, assessments of the afterlife and NDE experiences. As a matter of fact, I was kicked off his site for daring to mention the Lord Jesus Christ, which I, as many faults as I have, I do try to be honest with people with how I feel. And, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's a very sad thing that you'll be uh, kicked off these sites. Of course, it happened to the prophets and uh, uh, people, God's people all through history, so I shouldn't be surprised. So I'm going to read some notes that I, I wrote here so I don't have to uh, keep repeating myself. Uh, and the first wrote, note that I'm going to read it was on a Heaven and Hell site, which is uh, Swedenborg's, uh, uh, one of the books that he wrote. And uh, I think Heaven and Hell, although I believe that Hades uh, has been forgotten about here, which is uh, translated death, um, is the... Uh, other uh, place that uh, people go when they die, when they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't think it's the same as hell. I think hell is a place where people have heard the gospel uh, and they know of Christ, but for whatever reason, they took the wide gate instead of the narrow road. That's where hell goes. Hell is dealing with God's people. The whole Bible is dealing with God's people. And the problem is today, we have uh, the things of God, the Bible being used for people other than the people that are the Lord's. And so I'm here to address some of this. Okay, so without more delay, I'm going to go ahead and read here. I believe the assumption we still develop spiritually is wrong. Okay, I don't care what Emmanuel Swedenberg and others say. I have been done shortly and can tell you whatever the state you die in, this is the state you will remain in until Judgment Day. When I was absent from my body, the Lord was with me immediately. He was pressing next to me shoulder to shoulder, just as it is written 
in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, pre absent from the body, present with the Lord. So this was my experience. And I do, I do know the Lord Jesus Christ. If you watch my life in pictures, I gave you a very short um, uh, kind of overview of my life and my relationship with Christ. Anyway, I go on to say, the problem is that people only believe what they wish to believe and no amount of research changes people's hearts because God doesn't operate through the mind through us uh, compartmentalizing things and trying to figure things out in our mind. God operates through the Holy Spirit and these things are indeed spiritual. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not plugged in spiritually to God. I'm afraid you're plugged into spiritual deception rather even when you use the Bible as a base of understanding, because spiritual things are received spiritually, not intellectually. They're infinite. They are not finite like our mind. Uh, yes, I go on to say, there's a heaven and hell, yet people refuse to believe they will end up in the latter while awaiting the final judgment by the Lord Jesus Christ. We are either with him or we are not. There is no in-between. Today is a day of salvation, not once we had perished from the face of the earth. Now, Swedenborg goes on to say, you know, it's how we treat people, uh, what we do with our lives. And he's taken uh, Jesus Christ um, out of uh, being a judge, the judge of humanity, the final judgment that uh, I spoke here, in my opinion. Um, He's, you know, a loving God loves everybody and he wouldn't force any to perish and all. Well, that's just not true. It's just not true. And as I've grown as a, a Christian spiritually, I realize that there is no good in us except uh, what the Lord uh, puts onto our hearts and, and except what we choose to follow as we walk in faith with Christ. Anything else is walks of the flesh. And this is what the clergy ought to be addressing with these kind of people. Uh, I have a response here, but I think I'm going to um, uh, skip over it because it's um, it's uh, what uh, uh, Emanuel Swedenborg has uh, researched. And I also uh, know some other people on near-death sites, uh, Father Rod Walton, bereavement site. Uh, he's a brother of mine. But uh, I think we got to separate the chaff from the wheat here. Not everybody is going to go to heaven when they die. I'm sorry. Um, and when you die, either go to heaven, hell, or Hades. Okay, and um, I wrote another brother that was talking about when he died, and I was about this, as people go to AIDS. This is translated death. This is a waiting place. Hell is a place of torment. But hell is a place of torment for the people who have rejected the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has called his people unto himself. And I'm sorry, but uh, it doesn't include everyone. Um, pop, uh, um, of course, this isn't popular with a lot of Armenian doctrines that think uh, that everybody have a, has a choice to make. Um, for or against the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we don't know who they are, but I believe that God actually chooses his people before the foundation of the earth and uh, because he knows men's hearts and he knows what people are going to do. He's not trapped in the space-time uh, continuum like we are. He's outside, it, outside of that in the quantum world. He already knows what's going to happen, who is his, and how people are going to react. And don't ask me to try to explain all that stuff because I really can't. But I know in faith, that uh, And what the Bible tells us is that uh, for the elect's sake, God is concerned for the elect's sake. Now, whether or not um, uh, the hell is an era of correction and all things will be restored, well, that's kind of academic. Um, it, and there's, uh, there's books out on that also. But that's not my concern. My concern is to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to tell people that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody can come to the Father uh, except through him. And in fact, he is so much the truth, unless you know him, you cannot see truth. Because truth is given 
only by the Holy Spirit. And no amount of these researchers, and I respect a lot of them because they are morally and scientifically and intellectually honest with their research, unlike um, some other people that I have met that are very biased towards uh, faiths, uh, particularly the Christian faith. I've noticed that, um, well, I'm not going to go into, into different faith groups. I'm really not, but I'm, but I just want to say that uh, either we are with him or we are not with the Lord. We, we will be judged are we part of, is our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, or is it not? Now, I've been told that, oh, you only had a stage one NDA. Well, that's fine. But I can also tell you that a friend of mine in an NDE site has said that my stage one uh, NDE is very significant because I had the Lord Jesus Christ pushing up next to me, and that's exactly what the Bible says. And I'm finding that a lot of people that name his name do not really know him. But that doesn't have anything to, anything to do with them shirking the clergy, people who name his name, uh, stepping up and um, uh, standing for truth as the prophets did. Now, I want to end this little video by reading, uh, let's see, I already read 2 Corinthians 5, 8, uh, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I want to read, the following verse, um, and he said, this is out of Luke 16, 30 through 31, ESV, and he said, no father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. This is talking about the rich man in Hades. And he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Now, of course, rising from the dead is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and the others that rose from the dead on that day that Christ rose, which a lot of people don't even realize are in the scriptures. And we can also say that uh, with people that have NDEs, they have, in a sense, risen from the dead. So I want to read that again because this is very important when I find that to be true with most people that don't want to believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to God, to heaven. And he said, to him, he said, no father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. So, you know, again, this is not about convincing somebody something through the power of the mind, through the power of the intellect. It has to do with the Spirit. The Spirit is who convinces people of their need for Christ. The Spirit is what drives people towards repentance, which steers the saints towards God, the elect towards God, towards salvation. Now, we have a choice to make once we receive that salvation. Are we going to take the broad road, or are we going to remain in Christ? Because when you die, the state that you're in is the state that you'll go into uh, eternity, or you'll go into the holding places before judgment. Either you are in Christ the day that you die, or you are not. It doesn't have to do with, oh, I made a, I made a profession of faith when I was a, a kid, and now I'm living like hell. It doesn't have to do with that at all. It has to do with remaining in the vine, abiding in Christ throughout our lives. This is the, the half of the uh, New Testament that, unfortunately, the churches have left out. We have to follow Christ, abide in Christ in our heart, and there is no other way to be with him in paradise unless we continue to abide in him once we have come to him. All right. Dear brothers and sisters, I hope this makes some sense to some people. I'm sure I'm going to be attacked just like the prophets were attacked in the past. But this is the truth that I feel God has uh, instilled into me and has laid out for me in my life, starting with uh, stunning under Dr. Gross, DD, THD, PhD, 22 years in seminary. But more importantly, he knew how to walk and function in the Holy Spirit. And these scientific community types 
have know nothing of this, and it's a shame because the clergymen should be um, should be the ones addressing these types of issues, not the uh, science religion types. Although, like I said, I do respect them because a lot of them at least are intellectually honest. God bless. Bye.